Let's look at the small bank story in South Africa. We know that Capitec and Abel have long been shaking up the traditional mm -hmm. banking sector dominated by those big four players. And obviously Investec Limited always mentioned when yeah. you, you talk about the banking sector. But the likes of, of a Grindrod, and I perhaps put you in the same league as a Sassfin, or is that mm -hmm. not a, a fair comparison? No, I think that's a very fair comparison. And, uh, you probably put Rennie's bank into the same fold as well when you look at industrial companies that have banking subsidiaries. But I think it's an important one that you, you mentioned Capitec and Abel and Investec because they've all shown... That very small banks can survive in and, this environment. And, and RMB if you go back further than you know, 20 years or so. So but how do you play in what one would assume is a sector that has very high barriers to, to entry? It, it certainly does. The barriers to entry are enormous and then it's, it's, a commodity, it's a commodity game as well. There's very little to differentiate between banks other than huge infrastructure. So for a, a relatively small player coming in, it has to be about niche, it has to be about focus, and at the end of the day, keeping your client base happy. Do you need retail clients to be able to boost size? Is that where the size equation comes into play? Eventually, I think you have to get there. If, you, if, if you're going to be a, a very big player in the banking sector, retail is important. But... To, to maintain an investment banking focus, if I can call it that, and, or, a, or just have a niche, retail isn't that important. So what are the prospects for Grindrod Bank from here? Where are your growth opportunities? What business are you pursuing aggressively? Yeah. Our, our core focus is, is still, a, on the banking side, a traditional property, commercial and industrial property sector, and then a very strong focus now on the asset management side. So for us, we want to grow in those two areas predominantly, try and maintain that focus. It's very difficult not to get sidetracked because there are opportunities that throw themselves at you on a daily basis. But I think what we've learned over time is that, that patience is, is a very key ingredient to having a successful banking uh, business. And the, the asset management business, why is that attractive to you? It's I, I know fund managers that I interview on a yeah. regular basis and they just say that this is a tough industry. It's difficult. It, it is to tough. Penetrate. And again, I think we've grown up with an asset management business, a, a very strong private client focus. And that's given us the, the history, the infrastructure, the, the core competence to be able to move that into a unit trust domain and into an institutional space. And, and our institutional space, again, we want to maintain a focus. And do you ever see yourself aggressively going after the retail investor? Unlikely. I think it's such a highly competitive market. Uh, if you're going to do it, you have to make that a singular focus. Like Capitec have done it, so it's not impossible to do. And, and they certainly are shaking that tree. But y it's very difficult to cross a, a private client market with, with a very strong retail or transactional banking focus. Not what to say about, it can't be done. What about the fact that you could potentially be a takeover target, especially with all this merger and acquisition activity going on at the moment? It's something that, that we don't necessarily consider. If, if you spent your life worrying about being a takeover target, you wouldn't ever get on with doing your business. Uh, those are shareholder issues. Uh, I suppose it's I'm starting to sound like Mike Brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you said it, yeah. not me. But for us, we, we've got to focus on, on, on becoming an attractive a prospect first and foremost. I mean, we're still very small. So for us, yes, we have a license, but that's not going to give anybody a key foothold into Africa at this point. Africa, is that a big growth arena for you? Not at this stage. Again, there's enough market for us in, in the South African domain. We, again, we see ourselves getting a core here. We can, we can grow later. Coming back to your rationale of establishing that core, mm -hmm. how does the small banking story unfold with Coming back to the initial discussion here, that there are high barriers to, to entry. What have you got to do? Be very, very competitive. Do you sacrifice you, margin? You, you do. You, you certainly sacrifice return on capital early on because you have to have surplus capital. You, you're going to sacrifice margin because you have to pay up for deposits. So those, those areas force you, as I say, you have to be patient and, and you have to take a view that it's a long-term game. And, and we saw a lot of entrance into the financial sector in the late 90s came because it, it was perceived to be an easy way to, to make money. Well, they left just as quickly as they came in. 